Hello everyone. So I am back home in Spokane and I hope you can hear me. I have a neighbor who I can see across the hillside who is logging and shredding trees. So it is very loud, but I wanted to film the haul of plants that I picked up while I was in Seattle at Christensen's Nursery and as well as Swanson's Nursery in Seattle. Um, I want to film before we uh, <laughs> also experience a rainstorm. Just trying to get it all in for you guys today. Um, but let's go over this really quickly and then in another video coming up, hopefully that I'll be filming this weekend, I'll be planting out some of these beautiful things with you. Everything is here. There are some trees in situ, a shrub in situ, and um, a climbing rose that I bought from my mom that she has since taken home. But I will try to see if I can find some footage of it. It is the Pearly Gates rose um, from Weeks, I believe. But, so I wanted to go over what I picked up. And the first thing that I grabbed, these were from Swanson's Nursery in Seattle were three of my favorite Beauty of Moscow lilacs. Now we lost some of the blooms in transit, but this beauty still has blooms and oh my go goodness, she smells incredible. I will film close-ups of all of these, but her blooms are the palest pinky blush, such a feminine, soft color and these double lilac blooms that fade to white and she just smells absolutely stunning beauty of moscow a firm firm favorite i want to collect as many of these as i can for hedging around my property as i create a hedgerow in the front yard so again i got three of those and then i picked up three of these emerald leaf campanulas these are rated to zone three they grow 18 to 20 inches high, 20 to 24 inches wide. I picked up three of these. I have uh, very rarely met a Campanula I did not love. I love to collect Campanulas and put them everywhere that I can. And then next I picked up this peony called Primivere, and I will pop a photo of it in bloom on the screen. But this is one that I just hadn't seen locally and I wanted to grab um, because I love the soft pink and yellow colors. And peonies are so low maintenance. They require very little from us gardeners and the deer do not enjoy eating them. Next, I picked up these two clematis. The first one is Montana Rubens and it had some blooms when I picked it up but those have since dropped. But this is a gorgeous pink early flowering clematis. I will put in all the info for the zone and the pruning group on the screen. Uh, but one I've loved for a long time. I actually already have this in the garden um, that I picked up in small four inch pots last year from mail order. And I just wanted a nice large specimen to get going in the garden. And then this clematis, I had seen online, Serosa Balirica, and I will pop a photo up on the screen. It is not hardy in my area. It's tender here. It's rated to a zone seven. Um, however, it is very vigorous. I will be growing this in a large pot and bringing that pot under protection in the winter time. But I want to be able to use this bloom as a cut flower because I love the little speckling on the pale buff colored leaves or uh, sepals actually. <laughs> sepals and um, it's just a stunning, stunning clematis. It is a uh, pruning group A, so no pruning on this one. And uh, just, just love it. I know it's not something that I'm gonna be able to find locally, so I wanted to pick that up while I was there. And then I picked up, on the way out actually, we were checking out, and this is a white silky wisteria I will pop its stats up on the screen. So wisterias are in the sweet pea family. So their blooms look similar to a sweet pea, smell similar to a sweet pea. Wisterias are one of my favorite vines. I'm still trying to figure out exactly where I want to plant this one, but I couldn't pass up this beautiful specimen. 
smells so sweet, so wonderful. The white silky wisteria. And then I picked up some little bits as well as these lovely Pacific giant astolat delphiniums, which are this very lovely pink color. So I picked up two of those. I actually got in the mail today tons and tons of delphinium seed from England and from New Zealand. I'm still waiting on some more from England and I'm going to be growing my own delphiniums to plant all over my garden and all the different beds. I want delphiniums everywhere always and I will be giving um, some starts away to my sister and my mom as well. And then I picked up another Campanula. I picked up three of these, but I'll show you these ones. This is Dalmatian Bellflower. I will put its stats up on the screen. It is zone four. And it is this nice trailing Campanula. So I want to grow it on the rock wall next to me and just have it kind of grow over the wall and have these beautiful blooms, rich in nectar for our honeybees. And then I picked up, last but not least, about, I think, eight of them, of these primulas, which have gone over. They are not at peak bloom anymore. I saw them on their, on Christensen's Instagram when they were at their peak, and I called them and said, hey, can you put some of these aside for me? And I paid for them over the phone. This is the Primula Siboldii Ice Princess. This is a beautiful periwinkle primula with that little uh, crimped or pinked edge. I uh, just thought that was such a stunning primula. And they are hardy down to negative 15 degrees. I think I'm gonna be popping these down here in the backyard, but I just love these. So I picked up three or five of the ice princess and then three i think three of these uh, late snow primulas with the same really just like cut edges to the petals and you know they're not looking their best anymore but it's a perennial it's already putting on new growth at the base i'm going to pop these in give them a feed and uh they will be off to the races. But this was just a stunning primula that I've, again, I've never seen before and I definitely wanted to bring it home and include it in my garden. So one of the crabapple trees I purchased at Christensen's nursery is already planted in situ. We wanted to get these out of the trailer as soon as possible and planted them as soon as we got home. Um, this one is the beautiful snowdrift crabapple, which is just now um, going over into its bloom. Some of it is still coming into bloom, but this will bloom profusely white in the early spring. Tons of nectar for the honeybees and just a gorgeous white crab apple. Crab apple snowdrift. I will pop all the zone details up on the screen, but this is one that I have wanted for quite a few years now and I've never found this variety locally to me in Spokane, Washington. Um, so I was very excited to pick this one up. And there's our little, our hives all in place. And I wanted to show you guys really quick before we get rained out. My sweet peas over here, I just transplanted them because I, ac I actually planted the seed before I had the uh, willow in place. And so the sweet peas were not planted close enough. So I actually transplanted them and I've watered them in. So this is the first time I've had to do that. So I hope that they will be okay. Look at my, I came home from Seattle to a bank of these annual weeds on all of this fill that we brought in, which again, is to be expected when you bring in fill, there's always gonna be tons of annual weed seeds. So it is an amount that I can't physically hand pull. So I will probably be uh, spraying them with some kind of organic herbicide, um, doing that as safely as I can at hours where the bees are asleep for the night. 
Um, I will probably be hand pulling all the ones right around the beehive though, just because I don't want to spray close to them. Uh, but yes, garden, garden realities. <laughs> Always here to serve up some garden realities. And oh, I just wanted to show you really quick my red campion that I got from Annie's Annuals last year in little pots is up and blooming. Here's a little snake's head fritillary peeking up here and I'm fairly certain this is a weed that I need to pull. But uh, yes, let's go see the other crabapple tree and a viburnum that okay, I Okay, so I was able to find an Everest crabapple tree at Christensen's Nursery. This was the last one actually that they had. If they had had more, I would have bought several of them, um, whatever they had had left. This is my favorite variety of crab apple. I've planted it on the south side of our garden. They open up to fat, dark pink buds, which open to white blossoms. And um, this is just a stunning, stunning crab apple tree. And I'm so, so, so happy that we found it and it got here without any major damage. This is a French cultivar and I will put the stats up on the screen, but um, I would love to have, so I have, I, I did go back to that local, if you watched my other video where I talked about the Everest crab apple trees, uh, I did go back to that uh, local spot where I found some small ones and I bought two more. So I have three of those, so four of them total. And I want to plant those along this ridge here to have a little alley of Everest crab apple trees. But I will be caging those to protect them from the deer. But I'm just kind of keeping them in my fenced in kitchen garden for now. And then I will take you guys over to, you can see we had, I just had 24 yards of mulch delivered. This is aged dark fines. The most I have ever had delivered was five yards. So this is going to take a tremendous Herculean effort for me to spread this because I'll be doing it mostly by myself. I'm going to try to get my husband to kindly help me spread it this weekend. But I wanted to show you the last thing that I picked up for myself at Christensen's. Now, <laughs> You can see my in pro process where I'm putting down, this is DeWitt landscape paper. I did not want to use fabric for reasons where I don't want to rob the, the soil of nutrients and um, more reasons I will go over later, but I did want a way to do no dig in this garden. I did not have enough cardboard on hand. So I'm using something called landscape paper. I will let you know what I think, um, but I'm using this to smother, out, smother down the weeds, put the mulch on top of it and have hopefully all that die down into the soil. Uh, but over here, I picked up a, I've never seen one of these before either. This is a Kern's Pink Snowball by Burnham. I will put a photo up with its stats on the screen. This was probably one of the most beautiful viburnums I've ever seen. And I have very good luck growing viburnums in terms of the deer. They are definitely not the deer's first choice, but this does have beautiful buds on it already. So I will get to see it bloom this year. It had a little bit of damage from, we had this actually in our truck and the uh, soft cloth, the black soft cloth um, was on top of it. And I think it just got a little hot. because it was Hopefully someday soon this border, and I will go over this, actually everything what I'm doing over here in another video. But the storm is rolling in and I'm going to be ending this video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I'm getting rained out so I'm going to end the video there. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I picked up at Christensen's. I have so much work to do in the garden. I'm going to bring you guys along. So much planting to do. And I have what looks like a nursery full of roses in my kitchen garden. So very, very soon it's going to be an upcoming rose video. I have, I've lost count for how many I'm going to be adding to the garden this year. I hope you guys are doing really well. Happy gardening. See you next time.